top down, smoking on a fat cigar. Cool breeze in my head, bitter sweet smoke flying through the air. It's the way I feel, smoking. Hey, everybody. That was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke, coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio headquarters in Hooksit, New Hampshire. Be sure to uh, follow us and subscribe to us on Podbean, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, Google, basically wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Pastor Padrone. I'm here with my fellow co-hosts, Paul, Nick, and Dave, Jim Price, the New England Regional Sales Manager for Asylum Cigars, and Tom Lazuka, the founder himself of Asylum Cigars, is with us via Skype. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing, I'm doing great, great, guys. Guys, thanks for Thank having you me so on much. tonight. Yeah, thanks so much for being with us. This is great. And tonight, our podcast is focusing on extra-large cigars and pipes, extra-large-sized pipes. And there's no better way to start uh, getting into a talk on extra large cigars than with Asylum. And we are smoking the Asylum Pandemonium 70 by 8.5. Is that the official name of this cigar? Yes, sir. Tom, you want to tell us a little bit about this cigar? Like what's in it? It's all, it's a Nicaraguan Puro, correct? That is that correct. Is correct. So it's so a, it's uh, a uh, dark, uh, dark Habano, Habano wrapper, wrapper, Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian uh, uh, pardon me, Habano, Habano wrapper, wrapper grown in Honduras, uh, Honduras, Nicaragua. Jeez, I can't even get it right. I'm just started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even drinking. <laughs> Honduras. So used exactly. to curl. No, this is Nicaraguan uh, <laughs> no, Habano no. wrapper. Uh, and what really gives it a lot of flavor, too, it's got that Esteli Jalapa fillers, but we, we put, uh, there's a fair bit of Maduro in, in, in the wrapper, or in the filler, pardon me. So that kind of gives you that richness, that full bodiness to kind of go with that spiciness of the wrapper. Mm, that's great. Now, what was the idea behind the pandemonium, and how does it kind of fit into the Asylum lineup? Well, what we wanted to do with the obviously we're known for big big ring gauge cigars, so you know we we wanted to make another big cigar, but uh, we wanted something a little bit fuller than what we've had in the marketplace, and you know we had the Nectophilia, which is a full body cigar, but uh, that one is all Maduro, so it's a little bit richer, uh, not quite as strong, mm -hmm. uh, and then the Asylum Thirteen is a medium to full, so we we just wanted to have something a little bit fuller body than. Uh, than what we had in the, uh, it, you know, on the shelf so far. Sure. So, <clears throat> Paul, Damn. again, we are sans anyone from the 724 Lounge. Is there something wrong with us? Do they not want to? Probably. Do they not want to share their time with us? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just maybe it's too much testosterone for them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I live in the estrogen palace. I'm very comfortable with having a little estrogen here. I wouldn't mind at all. But we have Paul telling us what was given to us by Kendra, the potion master, for our pairing tonight. And what is it we are drinking with uh, the pandemonium here, Paul? Okay, so tonight we decided to go with something made, well, not necessarily made local, but it is from a local gentleman. Uh, it is the Walrus Blood American Whiskey. Uh, it is an uh, American blended whiskey uniquely bottled with a pair of Hungarian oak cubes, which mm. have been charred and then soaked in port wine for six months. In the bottle, the charcoal and wine from the cubes imparts flavor, darkening, and complexity to the whiskey. See, uh, now, I want to know who thinks of this. Why do you think to yourself, you know what, I want to make a whiskey and then I want to take some cubes of wood and burn them, and then soak them in some kind of wine, and then chuck them into my bottle. Who, who does who does that? <laughs> I mean, barrels, what's all barrels what's, are charred, so they char the barrel. Yeah, yeah so I, like, I use them for my smoker. They sell the my smoker the scraps of the barrels. The you sell it, yeah, but yeah. What, do you say 
you know what? I'm going to put this in my scotch and just put, you know, cut off a truck. You know, it's amazing to me how they come up with this stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm not sure how long it's aged. I'm assuming it's at least a year or something. It's probably, <clears throat> I don't think it's rested in a bottle for 10 years, but. No, no. But they tell you that, I mean, you can they see the doubt. cubes in the bottom of the bottle. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the longer you let the bottle sit, the, 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 the flavors change because the because it's still in contact. Yeah, it's constantly changing because of those cubes. So if you if you were to get if you were to drink it maybe this year, it would probably taste a little bit different next year. So I, and and the flavors that's that are, there's really not cool. there's nothing official as as far as the uh, the flavor notes, but uh, just in the few sips that we've <laughs> had, wood. Tried wood, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, first of all, it's a very, very smooth whiskey, incredibly mm. smooth. Um, getting a little bit of honey, uh, a little bit of woody notes, uh, some nice mm. little fruit, a little bit of spice too, um, but it's a little bit. It's playing more of a supporting role. Um, very, very. Mm. It's complex, but very, very smooth. You know, it's going great with the cigar. It is mm. very, going very, Absolutely. very well with the cigar. All right, now, Tom, I got some questions for you. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. All right, now. I know um, you started out as a uh, rep for Christian Aroa. Uh, close. Close? Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. my first job in the industry was uh, a rep for Calibri Lighters. Oh, okay. And then my first job actually in the cigar side was with, with Christian at Camacho. Okay. Now, you worked with him for a while. He went you know, his own way once he sold the brand to Davidoff and everything. What made you decide to switch from basically being a rep to being a brand owner and getting into the manufacturing business? You know, uh, it's funny. Coming into the business, you know, I never really had those aspirations of starting my own brand or company. Uh, I was fortunate, you know, when I started working with Christian at Camacho, he uh, – uh, very open to ideas, would, you know, would call me and just say, hey, I'm going to Honduras, why don't you come down with me? Really started to learn about the processes, uh, you know, that take place at the farms and the fermentation and, and all those things. And, uh, you know, over the years, uh, Christian had given us a number of projects to, to work on and he had uh, thrown an idea out there and uh, I developed a brand and, and put it in the marketplace and, uh with Camacho and it was, yeah, it was a bundled cigar called the outdoorsman. It was only sold in, in my territory. And, uh, uh, you know, after, uh, Christian sold the company, he, you know, he had approached me and said, listen, you're, you're ready. Let's do this. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, doing well with Davidoff. I enjoyed, uh, Jim Young and then the guys there. And, uh, but Christian just, he, he kind of, I basically told me to pull my tampon out and uh, <laughs> so, let, 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 I mean, in those words, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he also used the, uh, you know, if, 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 if you, if you want to run with the big dogs, you got to get off the porch type thing, you know? And I was like, oh, screw it. I'm in, let's do it. So <laughs> that was it. You know? So give us a little history on asylum cigars and, and how that came about. And, uh, you know, what was the idea behind it? And I, I know you had to kind of convince Christian to to do the supersized cigar. Well, I, I mean, now you guys know who the brains of the operation are now, right? So, so we got that figured out. <laughs> but, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, we, we, we obviously uh, had the thought of starting a new company together. And Christian had a good grasp on where he wanted to go with the CLE brand and then develop the Aroa brand. Um, you know, the Asylum brand, we had another gentleman that was a part of it named Kevin Baxter at the beginning. And uh, so we all kind of threw ideas together and, and um, just kind of ran with it. You know, originally it was going to be a different name. Somebody disputed the trademark. So we just added 13 kind of at the last second. Christian's like, we got to come up with something now. So we're not going to make it on time for the trade show. So, uh, you know, we just said, all right, lucky 13. So we threw the 13 in there and, and away we went, you know, and we were you know, working in, in Honduras with, cause, you know, Christian, when his family sold the company, uh, they, they kept the farms. Mm -hmm. So we were working in, in Honduras on blends and, you know, Christian said, Hey, listen, why don't we go to Nicaragua 
and see what we can come up with for the asylum brand. So we partnered in a factory over there, went went over there and uh, really came up with blends very quickly. I mean, the tobacco was great. They've been a super partner for us and, and uh, you know, keep putting out great cigars for us. So it all happened very quickly. And, you know, I told him I wanted to do the big ring gauge stuff. And he looked and he said, well, that's the worst idea I ever heard. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I already ordered the bands and stuff, so you should probably order the molds and, and do it. So he said, all right, I'm, I'm going to do it. But I think he made he only he only wanted to do like 5,000 of them in the beginning. And, you know, he's like, I'm going to do it just to say I told you so. But, uh, you know, we're, we're a little over eight years into this now, and uh, I get to say I, I told you so every day. So I, I, I get, you know, a, a little chuckle in the back of my head every day from the t from the tobacco master. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great story. Now, um, what were some of the challenges that you had to face and overcome bringing uh, Asylum to the market? I know it's difficult bringing any new brand uh, to the market at all. There's so many different things out there. But you have a unique thing in that your cigars, for the most part, are all super huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the reality is, you know, when we launched the brand, we, you know, we had a 50 by five, mm -hmm. uh, 60 by six and 70 by seven, you know, when we launched the brand. So right. we've all, we've always made some traditional sizes too. And then later on down the road, we added Toro, we added Lancero, and then obviously we added even bigger with the 80 by sixes, 80 by eights. And now the pandemonium, you know, that goes to 70 by eight and a half. But, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, we had no clue how it was going to work. You know, we had an idea. We, 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 you know, the prices were, 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 were very good. And so when we launched it, I remember our first trip, uh, you know, I flew down to Miami and me and Christian were, uh, you know, we jumped in the, in his, uh, he had an H2 and the air shocks were dead. So it was like driving around, getting beat up all day. Every bump you hit, you felt like you were like the karate kid getting your ass kicked. And, uh, and I remember it was like myself, we had another salesman at the time. Well, he's still with us in, in the Detroit area, Lucas Nook Mercer. And, uh, and, and uh, sorry, somebody buzzing in on me. So, uh, and Robert Caldwell was with us at the time. So I remember we would always race for the front seat. Is, is because it was worse in the back. So uh, I remember we did that first trip in Florida and, and it didn't go well. And it was all, it was like a month before the trade show because we could not start shipping product till July 2nd. So this is, you know, in July, less than a month before the trade show. And, oh. you know, people were kind of, eh, I don't know, you know, we'll see at the show and kind of mm -hmm. sat back going, wow, I, I just quit my job. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, you know, I had a pretty good gig at Davidoff and Camacho. And, uh, but, you know, it's funny. We got to the trade show and it took off instantly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the original idea was just for me and Christian to, we weren't even really going to hire salespeople. It was only going to be a couple of us. Uh, we're going to make a, you know, our goal was to do about 600,000 cigars a year. Uh, so, you know, we went into that trade show hoping to sell 300,000 cigars mm -hmm. for the first, for the second half of the year of 2012. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up selling 785,000 cigars the first six months. And, wow. you know, and that's Christian looked at me at the show after like day two. He's like, listen, start hiring a full sales team. Let's we got something. And so right away we started bringing in in-house reps and, um, you know, it's been growing ever since. That's fantastic. Now, this year has been uh, a different kind of year. Yeah. To say the least, just a little bit, just yeah. a little yeah. bit. Different. Now, I I really have to ask, you know, and I feel like I can say this because uh, I've, you know, I've met Christian a number of times. I've had the privilege of interviewing him a couple of times, um, including on this show. What had it, what has it been like for you, working? with an A-class germaphobe in the middle of a global pandemic. <laughs> well, the, 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 the beauty of it is I've been training for this for like 17 years with him. <laughs> it, it was easy. Are you kidding me? Like what? You throw a mask on, we're good to go. I mean, it was, uh, 
you know, we, <laughs> we, I, we, we, we've already had this going for, for, for almost two decades. So, you know, it's pr pretty easy transition with Christian. <laughs> yeah. I think the hardest part for him, I think, I think his wife, Alex is even more. So he, we, we refer to Alex uh, lovingly as the Colombian health authority. So, she, uh, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we <laughs> but, uh, I asked him, you know, what it was like being a germaphobe in the middle of a global pandemic. And he said, it's awesome. <laughs> I like, sees the world. Like I have my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, told, you know, he, 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 he had said, I told you so there, right. He prepared yes. us. Oh my goodness. It's awesome. Um, now what, drives you now, now that As Asylum has become this great, successful brand, what's what's keeping you moving forward with this? You know, uh, really, you know, we're fortunate enough, uh, you know, Christian, uh, his family did very well. And, and so we're not a money driven company, you mm -hmm. know. Maybe I'm a little more than Christian because he's 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 a bit ahead of me at this point, but yeah. that's all right, <laughs> you know. But uh, you know, we're not money driven. I'm not money driven in life. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we we really really want to produce good cigars that people enjoy. Uh, we want to make sure people are taken care of uh, in, in the U.S. in Honduras, Nicaragua. Uh, so you know, it's about the entire uh, uh, team. It's about you know a lot of what we're doing now is. We've developed a lot of programs in, in Honduras um, where we're doing different things, like we're completely switching our factory and uh, farms over to solar power. Hopefully by the end of 2021, we'll be 80% solar. Um, you know, we, we've been Bayer certified since 2008, right when Christian sold the company. Um, they had been working with Bayer. Uh, they do something called Bayer Crop Science. And what that means is we have zero impact on the environment. So, uh, you know, for over 20 years, we've been working in that environment. And that goes how we irrigate our fields. Uh, you know, we have misting stations. When you walk in long before COVID, COVID came to sanitize you, when our car drives into our farms, the Why car gets sprayed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> you know, so we did, there's a lot of steps that we were already doing, you know, all the wood we use comes uh, uh, from certified places where, you know, we're putting back more wood. Uh, you know, we just signed on with the Honduran government. Uh, we want to do, uh, I, I want to say it's around, I, I don't quote me on this, but I think we're going to end up doing about 375 hectares of land, which is just under a thousand acres uh, of reforestation. Uh, we wanted, you know, our original thought was to do the, the Spanish cedar, uh, but basically the government said, listen, in 20 years, someone's going to come cut it all down and it's not going to have a benefit. Uh, so what we're actually doing is we're bringing in, uh, the original fruit trees. That area was really a, you know, rainforest, uh, 60 years ago when Christian's father got there, um, so we're putting all different types of fruit trees that the, the local people can eat. They can get the food, the fruit off the trees. Uh, and then we're going to bring back some of the indigenous birds uh, like parrots and uh, different types of parrots uh, because they, I mean, I remember going there my first time 18, 17, 18 years ago. And uh, you know, you could still see the birds in the trees, a lot of the, the, the different types of parrots and uh, you don't see them at all anymore. So we hope we're able to kind of, bring back some of the natural animals and habitat and uh, uh, start developing, uh, you know, giving back to Honduras and, uh, you know, the other projects we're doing, we've done uh, the mobile mammograms. Uh, they don't, and mm. Dan Lee, where we're at, they don't have access to mammograms. So a couple of times a year, we have the trucks come in and, and they give uh, the service. And if the, there is an issue, we get them into a hospital in, in Tegucigalpa or, uh, where, where they can be treated. Uh, so our goal uh, over the next few years is to buy a couple of these vehicles. They're about $250,000 a piece, but we want to uh, uh, start doing a program where we, we buy the vehicles and we have them there constantly in, in, in uh, providing the mammograms for the, for the women in the area. That's awesome. That's a that's a great idea. Fantastic. That's very, very cool. And Tom, when the birds come back, will there be 
bird baths everywhere on the property, or will it be one big? <laughs> well, they allow I mean, it's own. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not necessarily. It's not our property. You know what I mean? The the, right. the it's the government's land that. So it'll be in different areas. Uh, where we develop, I think the first one is, you know, only uh, it's about six acres uh, that we're doing uh, the, the first project. And then there'll be another, you know, whatever it could be five, six, three acres, whatever it is here. And, and so we'll continue to do that. Uh, so, no, I, I don't think there'll be bird baths at each location, Jim. But maybe we can maybe you can make some and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put them out there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. They have to be sanitized, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's let's give Tom a chance to smoke his cigar and and talk about what we're experiencing here. I'm looking at my cigar and the burn on this is fantastic. Mm, it really is. The ash is really holding on. Um, it's burning very very evenly. I don't know what it is, but when I smoke a really huge, thick ring gauge long cigar, I'm always really impressed when it burns right. Because yep. there's there's so much tobacco in here, you know. Um, uh, Paul, what are you what are you getting off of this cigar? So I get a lot of uh, earth and cocoa from the cigar. Um, mm -hmm. Nice uh, light spice on the uh, exhale, but on the retrohale, a nice deep rich spice as well. Very very well balanced, uh, very smooth too. So this is a really really uh, excellent cigar to now you I've seen you smoke 70 ring gauge cigars correct you know you're not afraid to, to put this in your mouth no, no. so <laughs> is this are you enjoying this oh absolutely absolutely this is probably one of the best uh, 70 ring cigars I've ever smoked really yep and and the, the one that I would say I would I went to before the pandemonium came out was the Medulla Oblongata 770. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And specifically oh, the box cigar. press, which was one of my favorite large size cigars to smoke. I've I've smoked that many times. I've I've never smoked the 70 Medulla mm -hmm. or the Oblongata, but yeah. I enjoy that cigar yeah. very, very much. Um, Nick, what about you? Are you picking up anything that uh, Paul was not? Are you enjoying it just as much? Absolutely. I love this size. I, I smoke. I've been smoking a silent. I love this size, man. If it's a it's cigar, size. you like the size. I like the size. Um, Nick, could I you mean, remove your hat, please? Thank you. <laughs> you guys, got to get me a new hat. If you get me one yes. that says a silent, we can uh, advertise it on the show. Um, I've been smoking Asylum since they first came out. I was working at Maddie's shop in Plastow mm -hmm. when he first got him, and I started Plastic with. Uh, the 5x50, which at the time was the best $5 cigar money could buy at the time. Yeah. Then I elevated to the 660, then the 770, and then when I started working at Twins, when you guys brought in the Medulla Oblongatas and the Pandemoniums, smoking all of it. And it's, all, it's great cigars. I love the big ring gauge. Uh, I always tell customers that you guys are one of the, co uh, the companies in the walk-in that do a big ring gauge correctly a lot of ring, a lot of bigger ring gauges their lack of flavor you have too much filler there's not enough wrapper it's a cigar almost like a prop so but with you guys it's not it's a really great cigar got really nice flavor this particular one really deep rich chocolate notes a lot of earth obviously it's from nicaragua so you're going to get those uh so earthy characters in it um i don't get the spice from it it's incredibly smooth I've been retrohaling this thing since the, uh, since the start. Not really getting the spice, but it's incredibly smooth. And I, I love Asylum. Like I said, I've been smoking Asylum since they first came out. Dave, what about you? Do you have anything you want to add to this? Um, I like how we're... <laughs> <laughs> and here's Bob with the weather. <laughs> David's been roofing the panel. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's been mine's burning a little wonky, but I'm like I'm huffing on it on purpose, so it's totally me. Um, no, but there's like there's a sweetness to it. Um, yeah, there's a, a nice mild spice uh, left on my palate. Um, I'm enjoying it very much. I like smoking these as well. Yeah. 
Yep. There we go. All right, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm enjoying it. It's good. I'm smoking it too fast, but I'm doing it on purpose. Jimmy's got a nice sash going. Yeah. That's a nice sash, Jim. Yeah. Now, uh, what do you think of the cigar? I know uh, you're going to say only good things about it because you sell it and your boss is, true. is listening. This is but... true. Um, no, I actually enjoyed um, the cigar. We were excited when it came out at the trade show. It mm -hmm. created a lot of buzz. It's cool packaging. Nice tray presentation. Yeah, the tray presentation uh, it's very unique, is great. As we know, to the market, there's no 8.5 by 70 mm -hmm. out there. Um, we've been doing very, very well with it. This has taken off, and I think overall... This cigar to me is definitely medium plus, medium mm -hmm. full, if you will. I get a lot of, to me, uh, light pepper, not heavy pepper, not a peppy pepper bomb. Mm -hmm. um, definitely coffee. Reminds me of coffee. Or yeah, the, this will yeah. go great with it's a cup like, of coffee. It, it, in your hand, it's, it's like a hunk of leather. You know, it's very, the wrapper It's like is, a billy club. Uh, yes, what the wrapper is. is stout. It's very stout. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I mean, you could see the construction there. I'm pretty sure these aren't easy to roll, so. Mm. Yeah, no, the and I love the oily sheen on the cigar. The wrapper oh, yeah, is just yeah. great. No, we've had very good response to it, uh, so we're excited to definitely have it in the lineup. Mm. Yeah, it's a nice addition. All right, now back to you, Tom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's uh, let's uh, bring it in a little bit uh, more personal here. What <laughs> what do you like to do when you're not doing asylum stuff? What do you do to recharge? Uh, you know that. For for years, I really I spent a lot of time in the woods, like deer deer hunting, duck hunting, different things like that. So everything uh, Christian would avoid. Pardon me. Everything Christian would avoid. Y yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's germs in the woods. Yeah. There's nothing to clean there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? The, the 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 camo outfit doesn't go well with the with the Louboutin tennis shoes. So uh, you know, I'm <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, yeah, I heard more than my car. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, you know, for years I, I spent a lot of time, you know, hunting and fishing and things like that. And over the last few years, uh, you know, I got engaged, and uh, my fiance Tina, uh, she has three boys. Two of them, uh, one, the oldest is in law school now in San Diego, and the other two play football at Hillsdale College. So uh, usually enough, this 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 time this, this time of year, we're normally chasing them around, going to all their football games and. Uh, but the Division Two season got canceled this year. I think they're looking at having a spring season, and uh, you know. And then I have two boys. My, my kids are. I have a sophomore in high school and a senior in high school. So uh, they're both kind of active, doing their own things. And uh, my youngest does a lot of acting and singing and uh, that kind of stuff. So we're chasing them around. But COVID is. Uh, Put an end to that for now until that stuff can open back up. So, but they're both got jobs now and working. And so it's, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of time to myself. And uh, unfortunately, with COVID, I can't go back into Canada. So uh, we haven't been really able to see in the last six months, spend time with my, with, with my other half. And, uh, you know, she was able to fly in for a week for like nine days uh, in September. And we went up to Northern Michigan for, for, for a long week. And, uh, but uh, other than that, you know, I, I really, I think I put on the COVID-19 and then uh, I, I've smoked 10 or 12 cigars a day. So I don't, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Sounds like pandemonium. 10, 10 or 12 of like these? <laughs> uh, a little bit of everything. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of everything. That, that leads into a good question here. If, if you were, if you were stranded on a desert Island and you could only have one cigar with you, what what cigar would you take? You know, I, I would definitely take something from uh, Honduras. Uh, you know, I came into the business with, with Christian and the authentic Corojo tobacco that his father, him and his father have grown for many years. Uh, so, it, you know, it would be... Uh, one of our Corojo cigars, whether uh, it's uh, the Aroa Corojo or the, you know, Asylum, the Medulla Oblongata Corojo, uh, would definitely be yeah. the Honduran Corojo that I would I would choose. Yeah, the Medulla Oblongata, that's my favorite Asylum cigar by Th far. I think that's a, it's just a fantastic, fantastic blend. Um, now... You you heard us kind of talking about it before the show, and I, I guess now that we've brought up the whole COVID thing and sports getting canceled, what's it like being a Lions fan up there? 
right. you know, I, I, I gave up on the Lions <laughs> like five years ago. So uh, I, 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 I tend to kind of lean. I, I, when Brady was with the Patriots, I love the Patriots. Um, I still like Belichick. I know a lot of people hate Belichick outside of New England, but I, I think the guy is a genius. Uh, but and I always, I always loved the Steelers. So you know, I, yeah. I kind of went away. The Lions have been, uh, you know, they've won one playoff game my entire life. So there's not much to look forward <laughs> to with the Lions. So you know, I'm almost 50 years old, and they, they they've went won one playoff game. So. You know, if they're on, yeah, I'll watch it here or there, but I don't really follow the Lions too much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, w- w- let's let's get back into the the the, uh, the topic for the show here. What do you think it is about the fascination with bigger ring gauge, super sized cigars? I mean, I can tell you right now, in in my humidor, you know, in in hooks it here. We've got the pandemonium tray and the tray that is always needing to be filled the most is the 70 ring gauge. And the other ones are all, you know, selling too, but it seems to be the 70, the 80 ring gauge cigars that you guys make just fly off the shelves. And, you know, there's so many people out there. Like I know we have one listener, Heather, who, you know, is a, she's a great friend of the show and a, she smokes everything. She, she, you know, could not believe that we were going to smoke this cigar on the show. (laughs) People buy that. And I'm like, not only do people buy it, they buy it again. They buy it a lot. I know people who buy the, they buy three, four at a time every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nuts. What do you think the fact, is this just like, like the, the seven 11 supersize culture? (laughs) America? it's America. Give me something big. You know, no, uh, honestly, I, I, I think there's a uh, price value quality, you know, uh, all of it kind of blends together to, to make it what it was. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're probably, you know, I, I can't say for sure. Cause I don't know other companies numbers, but uh, you know, 70 is our number one selling cigar. It outsells Robusto yeah. Toro 60 for us, uh, you know, at, at a four to 10 time ratio. Mm-hmm. Um uh, so, you know, a lot of people thought the, the big ring gauge was going to be a fad and, and this and that. Um, every year for eight years, we sell more 70s than the year before. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's a growing segment for our company. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not quite sure what it is, uh, but I think, you know, I got, you know, I hear every day there's truck drivers who love to smoke it because, they can light it and, and, and smoke it the whole, you know, the, for three, four hours on the yeah. ride. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, but there's all different kinds of people that smoke it. And, and uh, it's pretty fascinating because we've never targeted one group or another group in, in marketing the brand to anybody. It's been very grassroots. We don't do uh, very little uh, print ad and things like that. You know, in the last year and a half, uh, we focused on the social media aspect, growing it. Um, but the reality is it, it just happened very grassroots, very on its own. And uh, to explain it, I, I don't have the answer. I really don't. Mm. You know, it, Nick brought up the point, too, that there's there's other companies that, that have tried to make bigger ring gauge cigars. And, um, you know, you're right. Most of the you know, taste from a cigar comes from the wrapper. And typically when you have a much larger ring gauge, the flavors are very muted, you know, versus having a smaller ring gauge of that cigar. But there's a lot of flavor in this cigar here. I have to say, this is not, this is not unenjoyable at all. It, there's a, there's a lot going on. No, is it the thank you. Black cigar that I've had. No, but I, that's not what it's meant to be. It's meant to be a really good, consistent, flavorful, fuller-bodied cigar. How do you guys, what do you guys do differently to make sure that what you're getting isn't just, you know, uh, a big pile of tobacco to burn in your mouth? And, yeah, well, and you I, know, one I, of the things but, we, yeah, one of the things we've, we've done from the beginning is, you know, when we started in Nicaragua, we moved one of our factory guys from Honduras into Nicaragua to make sure they roll them the way we want them rolled. Uh, That factory was rolling them a little differently, so we changed that. Um, You know, 
he handpicks the tobacco, makes sure everything is exactly what we want. Um, you know, the 70 ring gauge cigar has nine filler leaves in it, you know, and one, one of the things, you know, uh, I always get the argument. People are like, well, the, the wrapper to, to, to filler ratio, uh, yes, it's a little different, but it's not very much different because you've got a lot more surface area on that cigar, too. So you have a fair amount of wrapper. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the biggest issue is the combustion rate. They burn very cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was joking with you guys earlier that you could try and hot box that thing and, 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 and smoke it down as fast as you can. Uh, but it, it really stays cool. And, and I think that's where, uh, you know, if we made that in like a 50 ring gauge, it would probably be very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd get a lot more of the spice from the wrapper. Uh, but that combustion rate state keeps it nice and cool. It never overheats. And so you get that smooth, cool burn. Um, you know, you really taste the, the, the Maduro in the filler. You get that, that flavor, that cocoa flavor from it. And then, again, you get that subtle spice. But uh, I, I really think, you know, again, when you talk about complexity and those things, when we look at a cigar like this, you know, I get the argument, well, you just put a lot of cheap filler in there. Well, if you really know how cigars are made, uh, you know, somebody could do that. But if you're using the tobacco from the plants, um, you know, uh, a wrapper leaf in, 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 in a filler uh, really could only, the difference could, might only be there's a, a blemish on the, on the leaf or the, the, the color of it or something might just not be right. Uh, so the quality of the tobacco is there. And I think that's one thing we've always made sure is we're putting good quality tobacco in the cigars. Uh, the factories in Honduras and Nicaragua do a fantastic job of making sure they're consistent um, so, you know, it's a real team effort from the tobacco to the rollers to, you know, guys like Jimmy, our sales team and, and going out and getting it in front of people. Uh, it's, it's really made the brand a success and it's not me or just Christian or, or anybody. It, it's been a real, uh, true team effort to, to grow this brand and make it what it is today. Mm. What would you, what advice could you, would you give to somebody who had never smoked a 70 ring gauge cigar. And, you know, and you say, have you ever tried one of these? And they look at it and their eyes get wide and they're like, well, I could beat somebody to death with it, but why should I smoke it? I mean, how, how do you, how would you encourage somebody to try one of these things? Well, you know, the, the biggest thing is obviously time, right? You know, it, it, it is a cigar that takes a couple hours, two, three hours plus to, to, to get through. So, you know, it's one of those cigars, if you're sitting down for a football game, uh, it's definitely something that, you, you you know, you can smoke through the whole game and, and, and you know, smoke it. I, I always, I do a lot of retrohaling. I, I, I actually probably inhale way too much of my cigars because uh, I like to really see the, the, the ammonia and the nicotine content in the tobacco to make sure it's been aged properly. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so I, I, I inhale quite a bit, but, um, you know, for the, for the guy who's just kind of considering it, it's really a, 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 a time thing. If you really have the time to sit down and enjoy it, um, you know, a lot of people, it's the, the, the size that throws them off a little bit. Uh, we do do the 13 Nicaragua in a box pressed and, and obviously the medulla oblongata. And so that fits in the mouth a little better uh, for a guy who not necessarily likes the 70. I would recommend the box press version doesn't feel quite as big. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's the whole idea of the humidor. You know, you walk in, there's different sizes, different flavors from all over the world and different companies. And, uh, you know, all I can say is try it. You know, like if, if you, you can't really knock it until, until you try it. And I would recommend everybody try it. And, you know, it might not be your thing. That, that's totally cool. But, uh, you know, I don't think you'll be disappointed in the flavor or quality of the cigar. No, definitely not. I mean, I'm really impressed by how this is burning. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've had this. This is the first time I've had the 70 ring gauge. Uh, I'll 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 be a little transparent with you. I was I was antsy about trying this cigar. Sixties <laughs> um, uh, usually about as big as I go, but I I think I would have to say of the three sizes, this is my favorite. Yeah. 
It's mine mm -hmm. too. And yeah. and I'm really pleasantly surprised. This is and the again the construction on it. You can tell. I mean, look at Jimmy Cigar. He's he's stacking dimes over there like a champ. Yeah, he's stacking, stacking silver. We suck at your ears over there. Oh, we know why. We know why you're the rep now, Jimmy. Boy. <laughs> Everyone did you seeks know, asylum. Did man. you know Jimmy and I went to high school together? <laughs> yeah, Tom? you know Jim, Jimmy had. Uh, told me that earlier today. I did not know until uh, before the show. Yeah. So you, you, not, not, you know, now you, now you just aged yourself, though. So you know, I did. I'm the third oldest in the company. <laughs> Are you really the third oldest? No, I, am I the oldest now? I, uh, Pepito retired, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Well, Pepito was our warehouse shipping guy for uh, he's about 80, 100, 100 right? years, and he, he's 85. He finally 80, retired. Play this guy. You want to talk about a worker? He puts a lot of people to shame, right? <laughs> yeah, they, the Pepito was amazing. I've been but uh, yeah, for as for the sales team, yeah. I think you're, you're you're number two. I think Robert Wright has you beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Robert, Mr. Robert Wright. You yeah. Old man Jimmy. Yeah. Old man, old man Jimmy. Christian's not fifty either, right? I don't think he is. No, you? no, Christian's uh, about eight months younger than I am, so. Ah. I'll, I'll be 49 in a couple weeks. Mm, I'll be okay. 51 Christmas Day. Christmas Day? Yes. Aw, look at that. Do you, Christmas baby. Do you, mm -hmm. do, you get, do you feel like you get slighted on your birthday? Uh, way back I did. Way back? Did you, you know, want like double the presents? Christmas birthday and Christmas. Thank you, Aunt Jess. Yeah. And it wasn't <laughs> twice as good, right? Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. I no, mean, the, the new sweater... Was, not even having like a birthday, it was kind of. I mean, now obviously you're older, you don't really. Yeah, you don't. Really not care, as big yeah. of a deal, but my mom would always. Hey, make hey, sure hey Jimmy, that. sorry, man, you don't trump Jesus, bro. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I did spend many years <laughs> believing I was Jesus. And, <laughs> um, no, but it was. A, I don't know. It was interesting. My birthday is the twenty fifth too. Yeah. Why isn't it important for me? What. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So, so Tom, what's what's next? What's next for Asylum? Are you coming out with anything? Yeah. New? Well, we've got the uh, you know last year we launched our, we celebrated our seventh anniversary with the Asylum Seven. Yeah. Uh, so with COVID, we got pushed back a little bit, but uh, uh, the first batch of Asylum Eights will be in this month. So we should have uh, uh, we sold out that production. So. Um, those will be in uh, th this month in October. Uh, so it's a little, obviously, a different blend uh, this year than it was last year. So this is a Honduran blend that we did this year, where last year we did a Nicaraguan wrapper with the Honduran binder and filler. So it was the first time we combined the tobacco from Honduras and Nicaragua. And Nicaragua. Uh, so this year it's a 100% it's a Honduran cigar. Um, and then we've got a few other, you know, small projects in the works that could turn into something very big. Um, you know, we've got, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with big time, Tommy, uh, no, big he's, time. He, he's an Instagram guy who smokes okay. cigars and he, uh, he, he was actually on, uh, America's got talent with Nick Cannon a number of years ago. Really? He was smoke, oh, smoking God. our cigars on stage. It was actually his cousin, I believe was singing or his nephew. Cousin, I think it was his cousin. But he was on the side of the stage smoking the cigars, and uh, you know we noticed they were our cigars. And then uh, over the years, I got to meet Tommy, and so we got a big time Tommy edition 770 coming out soon. Oh. Uh, th they're in production now, and then we have uh, uh, a few years back, five years ago, we did uh, we launched a limited cigar in the Detroit area called the Devil's Night. And uh, so we're relaunching that for uh, a couple of events that we have coming up for Halloween. Uh, so they'll be available at uh, Ambassador Cigars in Michigan and Troy, Michigan, and the Tinderbox in Dublin, Ohio, uh, are the two stores that will have that cigar. Uh, so that'll be something just a limited production. It's uh, only 5,000 cigars. Um, and then we've got a couple other small projects. We, we're doing a, l a little cigar uh, a little 48 by four called the, uh, in the medulla oblongata called the, uh, 20 minute toms. So they're just a quick, quick smoke. Those hopefully we'll have out in the next month or two. Um, uh, 
and that's really about it for this year on the asylum. You know, uh, we, we yeah. So we got a few, you know, there are a few projects, uh, uh, kind of more, you know, smaller batch stuff that we're doing. Um, but, uh, you know, and then we'll, we'll look at 2021, you know, we were starting to think about that, but, you know, we got to put the asylum nine together and, uh, we got a couple of their ideas that we're, we're, we're looking at that I can't tell you about yet because I don't even know if they're going to happen. But, uh, you know, COVID plays a big role in it and how, yeah. how, how much longer this lasts and how we can, uh, you know, get down there and finish the blends. I mean, it took us a long time to finish the seven or the eight and the CLE 25. We're launching uh, this year also to celebrate Christian's 25 years in the industry working with his father mm -hmm. so that one's just about ready uh, I think the blend's done so hopefully that one will get out here before uh, Thanksgiving uh, in November so you know we've got a lot we got a few things on the plate that's awesome all right now we're coming up here on the end of our first half here Dave what's your uh, final thoughts on the uh, asylum pandemonium I feel like it's uh, it's stayed very consistent throughout the whole smoke. Um, it's got like this sweet. <laughs> you mean throughout the whole first third? <laughs> 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 it, uh, it's got a sweet kind of like a, a mild pepper um, to it. A um, little earthy and leathery. Um, it's a it's it's surprising. I I mean. I always thought that, like, you know, smoking a big cigar like this would just be like, you know, like just blowing you out of the water. But it's it's really, really enjoyable to smoke. And it's funny. It's not intimidating when you smoke it. It's just enjoyable. And it's it's nice to, to have something uh, that's so consistent last so long. You know, I mean, so many times I smoke a cigar and I'm smoking it down to the little bitty nibbies. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's like I'm always sad that it's gone. And it's like with this, it's like I feel like I can finally I finally find something that I can smoke for hours and just totally enjoy it. Nick. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Nick says it's great. Yeah, it's very municipal. We'll put you down for 30 trays. Put me down. <laughs> um, going back and forth with the, with the whiskey and the cigar, mm. the whiskey – is kind of bringing more of a, a sweeter earthiness to it. Mm -hmm. um, and just like Dave said, the consistency to the cigar is incredible. I'll be smoking this on the way home once we switch back to uh, – when we go to the second half of the show. Um, it's just really good. It, like Dave said, it's surprising when you get a cigar this big how consistent, how good it is. Because a, a lot of big ring gauges, when you go over the 70 – go to the 80 it's gonna be lack of flavor this is consistent you get the deep i think it, the deep dark chocolate notes in there earth get some leather i don't have any spice on mine but you know it's dave it's a different palette but it's just incredibly smooth mm. it's a wonderful cigar like i said i've been smoking asylum since they came out i love them paul i would absolutely agree with uh, dave and nick it's very consistent very flavorful um Still getting those uh, earthy cocoa notes, light spice, uh, the retrohale. Wow, it's really, it's still very, very rich. So if you have, if you're not really picking up much of the spice, try the retrohale, my friend. Mm. I think you'll be very, very pleasantly surprised how rich <laughs> it's it. transcendent. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, with the pairing though, it is bringing out a lot more of those earthy tones for me. Um, it's smoothing out the spice, but this is one heck of a cigar. Oh, I really yeah. love this. Now, Jim, you, you haven't really spoken much, you know, on this half of the podcast. I'm kind of wondering why you're here, but do you want to, <laughs> do you want to, you know, give All your final thoughts on the cigar here? Uh, final thoughts is I, obviously I sell them for a living um, for the company. I, I've always enjoyed the Asylum brand in its own. I mean, mm -hmm. I smoked them before I came on board uh, three years ago, over three, just over three years ago. And um, I'm always excited. I know when Tommy and Christian put something together, that it's going to be quality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key mm -hmm. to any, as we know, to any brand. I, I, that's what I love most about the company. You're not going to light up an asylum or anything from Sealy. And a lot of great companies exist, mm -hmm. obviously, as we know. There's so many great brands, so many great blends. But this is a, it's just a very consistent cigar. You just know when you 
when you light it that you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. And, and Tom's right. You, this is when you set aside the time. Yeah. Football game or campfire, like we smoked, you know, around the fire pit. When you have time, it's not, it's not a cigar yeah. you're going to light up if you only have like a half hour drive. Yeah. Or, when you have four days in a row, you can smoke. Right. Get right. One of these. Um, but this, <laughs> this thing is very, very, this cigar is very consistent. Uh, I'm, again, I'm getting this, those same flavor profiles. And, yeah. and to Tom's point, it does burn very, very cool. Yes. Yes, it does. And mm -hmm. yep. I don't know if you guys remember when big range ring gauges weren't around. I mean, I remember when 60 was considered big. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Me too. A while. 54 ring gauge. Yeah, that's pretty, <clears throat> yeah, 60 by 6. That's a big cigar. And then I think once you get you adjust it, you get adjusted to it, especially in the mouthfeel, uh, because it's so well made that it's it, the mm -hmm. size essentially doesn't become you know, an issue with it. It's right. A, it's a, it's def, like any cigar. It's a time thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's very well made. I'm, I'm happy to have them on board. I mean, this, mm. this has done really well for the company. Uh, and it's very creative um, packaging and, and the marketing of it. So, yeah, again, it's the whole team effort. So it's, it's a good cigar. I, I recommend it. That it is. I, I don't think I could add anything to what's been said. I keep going um, back to drawing. I mean, it's not, it's not one you, yeah, kind of put down and no, get we're sidetracked. All, where we've been doing we're all pretty really well with this thing. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're halfway through almost. So. You know, I, yeah. uh, great cigar. I think that the pairing with the with the whiskey. Oh, yeah. uh, I am the walrus. <laughs> Somebody had to say it. Right? Cuckoo, right. cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Somebody had to say it, but it it did. It, it, you know, you're absolutely right. Brought out some of the woody notes in the cigar. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, I, I, you know, if I say anything, it'll just be repeating what's already been right. said. It, it, great cigar. Great oatmeal cigar. stout. Imagine a nice, oh like an oatmeal Smith. stout would go mm -hmm. great with At this. like room temperature, like a traditional yeah. English yeah. stout. Yeah. It would be fantastic. Yep. This nice would go Guinness. great with a nice cup of coffee, yeah, too. Coffee, too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. This has been awesome. No, it was, no, my, it was pleasure, my pleasure, guys. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having us on the show. And You're welcome. And I hope uh, I hope you might come back sometime. You guys just let me know anytime, and maybe we'll get we we get Jimmy to talk a little more next time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can work on that. Yeah. Work on that. Don't sure. talk too much. You're talking too much. Don't talk too much. All right, much. all right. When we come back, uh, Jimmy will be talking more, and we will be uh, looking at continuing to look at extra large stuff by looking at extra large pipes and how a large pipe bowl affects uh, your experience of pipe tobacco. Hmm. And we'll be doing that with C&D's Carolina Red Flake. We'll oh, be right yes. back. Don't go anywhere. All right. Hey, everybody. We're back, and we are getting ready to start the second half of our show when we do our pipe tobacco review. However, you know, we're doing something a little bit different this week. And um, we're still going to review a pipe tobacco, uh, but what we are really kind of focusing on in this whole extra large theme is, you know, <laughs> how an extra large pipe bowl can impact your experience of the pipe tobacco that you're smoking. We just, you know, spent the last 45 minutes talking about. Uh, large ring gauge cigars and how that affects things and and the different uh, things you might need to do in order to make the cigar continue to have good flavor to it and um, uh, you know not everybody does it right but but uh, certainly you know there's a corollary I think between you know smaller uh, pipe bowls and larger pipe bowls and how that affects you know your tobacco and what we are smoking is last year's Carolina Red Flake. Um, there was a little snafu with uh, um, the shipping, and so the the 2020 release, which officially came out last week, uh, October 7th, uh, is probably going to arrive at our store tomorrow, and uh, we will have much of it. But uh, because we're twins and we're awesome, uh, we had taken some uh, of last year's uh, Carolina Red Flake and put it away. And we took out a tin of that. So this has been sitting in our uh, aging room for a year. 
and we're taking this out and smoking it, and we are smoking it all in extra large pipes. Now, uh, I should uh, say something about Carolina Red Flake here. And so from the website, uh, it's a blend of the finest North Carolina grown Red Virginias. Carolina Red Flake is our tribute to the old belt taken straight from Carolina soil. These top tiered Virginias are all grown, thrashed, blended and lovingly pressed and carefully sliced right here in the heart of old tobacco country. Combining a hay-like grassiness with subtly sweet, tangy notes, it's a minimalist blend with a complex flavor, rich, deep, and earthy, with hints of dried fruits and citrus. We're proud of our heritage, and we're particularly proud of this damn near perfect Red Virginia Flake. It is manufactured by Cornell and Deal, and the blend type is, guess what, Virginia. And the 2019 uh, um, uh, blend was Virginia's from 2015. And there's no flavoring or anything added to this. It is, of course, a flake. And, Paul, are we pulling a uh, uh, do-over with the uh, drink here? Yes, we are. We are doing, again, the walrus blood. The walrus blood. I am the walrus. I don't know where you guys got that from. Really? Wow. Oh, wow. You That's don't know sad. that? All right. We have a timeout here. We have, a, we have, a, we have a problem. Give, really? We have a problem. We're going to give uh, mm-hmm. Nick a lesson on yeah. some education. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy, tell him where it's from. <laughs> the, the Beatles. Yes. The Beatles guy. Uh, Obviously. I'm going to get you a copy of the White Album that will change your mind. Okay. On the Beatles. Thank you. It is single-handedly one of the greatest albums ever recorded, in my opinion, of all time. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom there boom. you go. <laughs> Cuckoo, kachoo. Mm-hmm. Cuckoo, kachoo. Now, as we're getting into this here, you know, uh, Carolina Red Flake was first introduced in 2016, and it quickly became the most uh, celebrated mixture in Cornell and Deal's small batch project. It's one of the blends that is most looked forward to every year. Um, that's certainly been our experience once we brought it in. It was amazing how fast it all flew by. And that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons we actually took some tins and put them away because we knew people were going to be looking for this and we wanted to have it after it was gone. Oh, yeah. And um, the whole idea is that it is a single crop blend of red Virginias that are grown uh, in Carolina. There's no toppings. There's no artificial flavorings on this. It's not hot pressed. It's not steam pressed. It's not blended with any other kind of tobacco. It's just straight red Virginia from the Mm. Carolinas. And um, uh, with that in mind here, what's, what's your initial thought on how this is smoking in your gargantuan oversized pipes. And you might want to say something about the type of pipe that you're smoking, Oh, especially for people who might be just listening to the podcast and not seeing these big, huge things that we're holding. Yes. I don't know if mine's big. <laughs> about medium size. Yours, medium. yours is more medium size, medium. but I'm, I'm not surprised. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Great wow. timing! Wow, that was a softball. Dave, you want to uh, <laughs> you want to talk about your pipe and uh, what you're experiencing right now? Uh, my pipe is a uh, uh, a Nording, and it is a very deep and uh, wide bowl. Um, I can typically keep this going for about maybe I would say about an hour, hour and fifteen minutes, maybe more. Um, it's uh, absolutely wonderful. The draw is really good. Um, it does really well managing the heat. That's mm. one of the things I love about the Nordings is they're really weird shaped bowls. Um, freehand bowls, yeah. You know, freehand bowls. Um, and the Virginia is uh, absolutely amazing. Stone fruits, dried fruits. Uh, the retro hail is especially amazing. Some bread in there. Um I, I can't explain it. It's like uh, it's like being able to retrohale raisins. It's a uh, unbelievable. That's interesting. It's on. I love it. Raisins. He loves it. Mm. Mm. Do you want to say something, Jim? Interesting comment there. Yeah. Raisins. Yeah. Very interesting. You always get interesting stuff from Dave. Mm-hmm. 
dazed and confused. I'd be a big raisin guy, but mm. what's your what's your thought? Uh, I haven't smoked a pipe in a while. It's been too long, actually. Uh, All right, we'll come back to you. This, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite smooth. This is one you're going to have another. It's bowl. very nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, is, for sure. I, I figured there would be a topping on it, some type mm -hmm. of additive. Mm -hmm. That's what it, initially when I took the aroma in mm -hmm. from the tin uh, was what I was uh, expecting. Um, but this is this is fantastic. It's, it's mellow, very very mellow. It's not, mm -hmm. not no bite. Mm -mm. The retro is this is perfect. Very, very smooth. Nice blend. Yeah. I, I, I've, wanted, I've never had it before, so was, I'm happy to try well, it. Well, this is a treat. I'm yeah, glad, I'm glad you're experiencing yeah. this with us. Amen. All right, Nick. I have my bowl. I'm sorry, my pipe, Savinelli Cobra, straight straight stem on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the bowl is pretty big. It's one of the biggest ones that they have. I have a couple of 320s that are probably a little bit. Uh, smaller than this one mm -hmm. this one is wide and deep mm. um so i can pack this thing pretty tightly still a really nice draw i love savinelli's the craftsmanship on them are i think second to none you get so many different types of styles with savinelli yep um i love peterson as well but savinelli i always gravitate towards yeah they're kind of like my thing they're weird but really eye-catching. <laughs> they are. They got like all these crazy colors and it, they're wonderful pipes to have. This is a great and, brand. And they're yeah. very, very affordable. A lot of the pipes that you get out there, 200, 250, 7 I think the this one cost me I like, I, I think about a 120. Mm. So they're all really reasonable, really nice craftsmanships. Um, and the tobacco, really smooth. Even on the retro hill, no bite. Um, really, a complex flavor of fruit in there. It, it's really kind of rolling off my tongue. Just bam, bam, bam. Just mm. really, really nice flavors in there. Paul, this is my Peterson rusticated fishtail. Ooh. Now, I've, I've been used to smoking the Rossi, which is you know more of a smaller bowl. Um, probably, I get maybe what thirty, maybe forty minutes. With yeah. the, the pipe tobacco, this one, I can get an hour out of easily. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest change for me was this one comes with a filter. Mm -hmm. And initially, when I first tried it out, I was hesitant because I, I just couldn't get the drawer yeah. as quickly as I could with the Rossi. But the more I use it, the more I love it because it slows it down. Yeah. It really does. And it just, it just you're able to, to really enjoy. It cools the smoke. It cools too. the smoke too. Yeah. It really, really does. It's fantastic. And it's, it's not a huge bowl, but it's, it's big enough. Mm. It really is. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot bigger than, than the Rossi. Now I have here, I've pulled out a, a very special pipe in my collection. This is a, a Savinelli autograph. Uh, autographs are one-off things. There's Ooh. only, you know, they they make one and then it's done. And uh, it's more of a classic shape, um, but the bowl on this is incredibly huge. Um, it, you know, uh, to kind of give you an idea, you know, in most of my uh, pipes, um, I could take two of those full-size flakes and that would be a little too much uh -huh. for most of my bowls. This takes over three. Yeah. And it still didn't fill it all the way to the top. Uh -huh. it's, this holds an immense amount of tobacco. And uh, it's very wide at the top. It's got a concave shape to it. And um, it is, it's the biggest pipe that I have. This, this pipe can go for a good hour and a half. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see the differences at, that, uh, smoking this Carolina red flake, which we have smoked on and off, you know, for the last year, since we've had it, we're familiar with it. Yep. Um, but this is the first time I've had it in this big, huge honking bowl. Yeah. And, um, I know a number of us, uh, tried the Carolina red flake in our smaller pipes, uh, earlier today. And so that we kind of had it fresh in our mind, you know, what that experience was like um, versus this. And um, as we move into things, you know, I'll be I'll be uh, interested to know what we all think. Um, now, do you guys typically go 
For what what size pipe do you normally like to smoke? Do you go for the bigger size, or do you go for a more regular size bowl or a small bowl? Well, up until a couple of weeks ago, I, I only had <laughs> one pipe. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was, that, had so that was my pipe of choice by default. Yes. But uh, since I got this pipe, thank you, Nick. You're mm -hmm. welcome. That was a great gift you gave me, my friend. Happy I birthday. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I've been smoking this nonstop. I, I, don't, I'm, I don't even want to, really want to go back to the Rossi because I, I, I'm, re I'm really enjoying the tobaccos with this one because, again, uh, it, I'm, allow, I'm allowing myself a uh, much uh, longer time with the tobacco. Um, it is cooling it down because of that filter, and uh, I'm just really, really uh, favoring this, this, this type of pipe. So you're favoring it really because you get the longer experience. Exactly. Yep. All right. Nick, you don't really have any small pipes. You no. have huge <laughs> and super huge. I do, yes. <laughs> I like Is there a reason you don't like, you haven't ever tried like a regular size, well, normal I, size pipe? I do. Is it, you know, some inferiority complex? You don't no. want to have something small in your no, hand? I just, for me, I, it, so. <laughs> when, Remember, Dan and I grew up in the 80s, so I saw a lot of bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. Um, for me, it's more of the the hand feel, it, 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 how it feels in my hand. Mm. I do have a Peterson sitter, <laughs> which is a little bit smaller in my hands. It is a really nice pipe. I love it. It's one of the um, the rusticated ones that mm -hmm. came out uh, two years ago now. Yep, yep, the Aaron rusticated. Yep, and I love that pipe, and I smoke it quite a bit as well. But with that one, I feel that I, I have to kind of switch hands a little bit more with a bigger bowl. It sits in my hand a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And also, I spend more time with the tobacco. It... I think it develops a little bit more in a bigger bowl because you have more time. Mm. A little bit, you, you get a little bit more flavor from the tobacco. Maybe uh, in a smaller bowl that I have in the Peterson, it's a little bit more uh, bold where in the bigger bowl, it kind of spreads out the flavor a little bit. Mm. It's a little bit more subtle. It's not as vibrant, but you still get a lot of the flavors. I think it, when you're trying to read the complexity of the tobacco, I always go towards a bigger bowl because it's a little bit easier. The The flavors for me come, they deliver to my palate a little bit easier than a smaller bowl. Okay. Now, most of your bowls, including that one, would be called like a pot shape. Correct. You know, the, they're, you know, basically straight up and down. Some are deeper, mm -hmm. some are shallower. But it's basically that same kind of shape. Yes. Um, looking at Paul's, that's the same kind of thing there. It's kind of this nice deep pot uh, shape. Dave, is yours is yours a pot or is it like concave? Does it get smaller toward the end? Is it like an upside down cone? I'm trying to use words you would understand. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, no, it's. it's <coughs> I know it's rounded at the bottom, but it's not. It doesn't get. It, I don't think the the diameter changes. Okay, so it's it's kind of a very long, you know, cylinder kind of a shape. Yep. And yours looks to be about the same. That's another kind of pot shaped. Yeah, this is the Peterson. I'm not sure of the exact model, but every it's year it's a they, gorgeous pipe, by the it, way. <clears throat> yeah, they make fantastic pipes. This is their. Um, Every year at St. Patrick's, they come up with a. Is that a St. Patrick's yes, pipe? Yes, it is. Yeah, this I've actually only smoked this pipe. Uh, I can't see the writing on it, but it's very small. But this pipe, I've only smoked two or three times. So this is what I brought tonight. That's fantastic. We're yeah. so privileged yeah. that you brought that yeah. pipe. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Seriously. Now, now this one. I've had this this Seven Ellie for twenty something years. This was the third pipe I ever bought, Ooh. and. Um, um, the only reason I was able to afford it was because I basically put it on layaway <laughs> and paid for it over like a month and a half or something like that. Um, but it, it's just been a fantastic pipe. And, it, and again, it just lets you know, you take care of your pipe. Yeah. You got it for years. Ooh. And, um, um, you know, this shape, though, is different from everybody else's. It is a concave shape. And... What's interesting about it 
is, is that you know near the top of the pipe you have this very wide surface area, at, which creates this great mass of coals over which you know the the tobacco is is burning underneath. But as the bowl goes down, that's getting smaller and smaller, and um, one of the things that that can happen when you have a big surface area like that is that the all that heat can be a lot of heat for the tobacco that's underneath it. And it's kind of the heat of what's burning that brings out the flavors in what's in your pipe. It's not like you're tasting what's burning. It's like you're tasting the what's being heated up and coming off of the tobacco that's underneath what's burning. Does that make sense? It does. It's almost like um, smoking a Perfecto or a Figurado, almost. Mm-hmm. Because you have that sure, wide, yeah. you have the, like, if you're smoking the, the Perfecto or Figurado in the middle, it's wider. And then at, you know, you're working towards the end, which is going to be skinnier. Mm. So it's going to be almost bringing that down into a funnel. Mm. So what I was told uh, from Mark Mormar, who is, you know, my go-to pipe guy at uh, Laodice, and uh, is that, you know, typically with a big, huge concave pipe like this, it's not really the best thing for Virginia's. Really? Because the heat burns the sugar in the cigar, in the, in the tobacco so quickly that it covers up a lot of the flavors. Ah. And that it's actually better to have a long, deep uh-huh. bowl than it is to have a concave like this. And as I'm smoking, I'm, I'm thinking I'm agreeing with what he's saying. Um, I smoked a couple of bowls in a, uh, uh, 7LE 321, mm-hmm. which is a, a smaller version of the, the very popular 320 size. It's like this author shaped, you know, it's like a, Ooh. it's like a stress ball that you smoke out, out of. It's, it's pretty amazing. much. It's, I have it's a great them. shape. I love them. I have several of them as well. And, um, but the, the 321 is a, a medium sized bowl. And I'll tell you that, that smoking the red flake in that, which took like maybe a flake, <laughs> this again took over three. Yeah. That bowl took a flake and a little bit less. And um, it smoked for 45, 45 minutes with that. The flavors were very deep and rich and lots of earthy wood notes. And, you know, this kind of raisiny kind of spice that I think Dave was talking about experiencing. And um, right now I'm, you know, I can taste those things but it's not near as deep and rich as it was in the smaller pipe. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm wondering, Paul, you, you oh. smoked the smaller pipe earlier today too. Yeah. Do you, are you noticing any difference in this larger pipe? Uh, <clears throat> maybe just a, a, a little bit less in, t- in terms of the, of the fruit flavor, the mm-hmm. deep, deep uh, maybe stone fruit. But other than that, not at all, not, <clears throat> not, any difference? I think it's just a just an incredibly smooth, rich, you know, nice woody flavors. The 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 little bit of that that raisiny spice, but the, on the retro hill, oh my god! Yeah, the retro hill is intoxicating. Incredibly smooth. Mm. Wow, it's it, and it's just a hint of spice, but it's just so nice and sweet. And let me just a sweet little spice to it, but it is so smooth. Wow, this is a fantastic tobacco. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, mm. You know, this is, um, I'm getting a lot of the wood. Mm. I'm getting a lot of the earth. Uh, I'm not getting as much sweetness off of this. And typically, Virginia is about sweetness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You get that, you know, so, you know, that kind of nice, deep, almost stewed fruit kind of, wow. almost, or molasses kind of sweetness, this deep, rich sweetness that's there. Um, uh, it's there but not near as intense as it is in my smaller pot shaped 321. Yeah. So what you're saying is if we're going to have this type of tobacco, we really should go small. Well, it depends. (laughs) 
I think well, uh, well I, smaller I think it's I have the most appropriate pipe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do for this for this particular tobacco. I, I think you do. I, I on the contrary, I, I don't agree with that. On I've smoked this because I have. But uh, you don't own any smaller pipes. Now. Well, like all I said, you the know is big, have you seen his huge, biceps. I mean, obnoxious pipes. My the, Peter, the Peterson that I have is it's definitely a pandemonium just, of pipes. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, the Peterson. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, Peterson pipe. the Peterson that I have is definitely the smallest one that I have. Most of the, uh, the other pipes that I have are the 320s and then this one. Mm -hmm. um, the Peterson is smaller. And when I smoke it, I still have Carolina Red Freak from last year. I freak. Still, flake. It's a freak. <laughs> I have um, freak. And I smoked it earlier this morning, and I thought it was really intense. You you get a you do get the fruit flavor in there, but I think mm. just the the it's less complex in that bowl for me. You still get some of the fruit flavor. It's very vi uh, vibrant. I get the bite. I get the spice on the retro hail. But on this, for me, I I want to smoke it in a bigger bowl. I feel that. It's a little bit more subtle, but I still uh, my palate is is very easily to pick up the complexities of that. It's more subtle for me there. I don't like this in a smaller bowl because it's too bold. This is subtle, and I like it that way. The fact that you just said that you have any tobacco from last year is me, shocking. Is shocking. <laughs> well, I. Well, once I bought the Esoterica Dunbar, that was like my main focus. I smoked that life-changing event. Have you had Dunbar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Esoterica Dunbar is amazing. Mm. See, now this is this is a new side uh, to Nick, you know, because if you know anything about him and cigars, it's go bold or go home. True. You know, go, you know, as as strong as you can get, I want... I want to get smacked in the face. I want to, you know, have my knees wobbling. If I can stand up after I've had the cigar, then it wasn't really as good as it could have been. And now, <laughs> but when it comes to pipe tobacco, you're appreciating the nuances yeah. more. That's what, this is what I'm hearing you say. Absolutely. And, and that, that you enjoy the fact that it's easier to pick out those nuances in the larger bowls. Yeah, for sure. It, it's uh, cigars, it, like you said before, it, for me, it's more of, you know, the, the difference between an automatic and a manual. <laughs> so for me, I like to take a little bit more control. With the cigar, you're kind of getting what you're getting as far mm -hmm. as draw. Yeah. With the, with the pipe, you can be in total control. You can have a tighter draw. You can have a looser draw. Um, you could pack it tightly, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I like that aspect of it. Plus, the nuances of flavors that you're getting from the pipe tobacco is way more than you're getting from, I, I think, any cigar that I've ever smoked. So basically, pipe smoking is representing the softest side of Nick. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I do have a soft side. side. We know. This segment yeah. brought to you by Pandemonium Cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful of the Asylum brand, 13. <laughs> Manufactured in Honduras and Nicaragua. <laughs> now, Paul, I hear you kind of, your experience is, is the reverse of what Nick is saying. You would rather have this in the smaller pipe. Yes, I would. And again, just maybe a, we picked up a, I, I had a bowl before the show and I was picking up maybe just a little bit more of the, uh, the, the fruit flavors from the Virginia's. But other than that, nothing else has changed. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe if I was to do it all over again, I would probably go back to the Rossi for this for this particular tobacco only, right. though. Um, because again, it's it is something that is uh, really limited. It's it's been aging now, like I said, for a year. Um, and so, if I had my choice again, I would go back to the Rossi. Now, how are you enjoying this? I'm enjoying in, in this your, immensely. Your... Um, so again, it's been a little while since I've enjoyed a pipe, but you know, amongst the, the talent here, I knew going in that it was going to be great. Um, All right, talking to your mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but coming in, you guys. I mean, obviously, I mean, I know my pipe tobacco, but you guys are, mm -hmm. you know, avid about it. So I'm, I'm enjoying it immensely. This is to me, it's just very, very mellow. 
It, mm. it surprised me for Virginia. I was expecting more sweetness. Mm -hmm. That's not to detract from the quality of the tobacco. Um, but I just, I go back to mellow. It's definitely, uh, Paul mentioned stone fruits, mm. like a, um, or almost like a, like a bone dry white wine, like the mineral and the lemony, mm. um, the high, you know, like a quality white wine, like Sauvignon Blanc or something like that. Mm. To me, that, that if I had to compare it to wine, um, it would be like a, a Sauvignon Blanc. I like agree I, with that. A yeah. little, little bit of a zip to it. It's not, it's not overpowering. No, no. Um, would this, this, would this go well with a, a Sauvignon Blanc, do you think? I think wine? if you got uh, a, maybe. or would you do uh, a red you, wine? I would do a red wine with this. Yeah, you yeah. could do you could do a white with it if it's a high quality and ones that are higher in alcohol. Yeah, so I you'd, agree you'd want a white that was at least thirteen and a half, fourteen and a half percent, which is commonly you know typical now. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't try it with like a Chardonnay. But you want something that to, to complement it. Chardonnay would be too fat; it would it would just dull it right out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, typically white wines probably aren't drunk with pipes, but <laughs> you never know. That's what it reminds I have, me of. I, I have mean. no idea. I'm I, I'm not that much of a wine drinker. I enjoy wine very much, mm -hmm. but it's just it's never been one of the things that I've just always had in the house. It's the same wine is the same as beer and the tobaccos. It's all these different descriptors we use mm -hmm. and try to associate or pick out a, a particular flavor. Uh, it's very very similar. Mm. This is um, excellent, though. How how are you enjoying it with the uh, walrus blood? The walrus is growing on me. You know, at it, 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 first glance, it's kind of looked a little gimmicky. Mm -hmm. Not not to yeah, sure. It. It's no. very very unique. I, I am like cubes pleasant. of wood in the bottle, and you're like, what the heck is this? I am pleasantly surprised. Right. This me is too. Quality yep. um, yep. quality spirit, without yep. a doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And and to your point, uh, Paul, you were saying that it, in a year from now, it could be. It'll could be change different. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I, if someone's collecting bottles of bourbons or whiskeys, and um, it might be one to go with. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I would I would seek it out again. What, um, what is this retail for? Does anyone know? What's it, what's I, it I on the know. shelf at? I don't it's know. It's got to be at least 30 or 35, I imagine. I don't know, but I'm yeah. going to buy a bottle tomorrow. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and it's, it's actually why am I delicious. Not surprised? You shouldn't be. And, and I'm glad it actually paired very well. With both the the pipe tobacco yeah. and the cigar, it did. Yeah, I thought it did. It, it held up this, pretty nicely. This thing's gone right across the board. Yeah, yeah. it's not overpowered anything. Or yeah, it's very no, good. it's very yeah. nice. It can yep. go with, I think anything medium bodied. And we have yeah. to thank, even though she's not here, the potion master came potion through master. again because she went right to this when I told her what we were looking for. Sausage without rope. hesitation. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you, Kendra. Sausage rope. There it is. That's what I was waiting for. I'm afraid to ask what that means. <sighs> we'll tell you later. <laughs> um, Paul, you have some news for us, I think, this week, correct? Yes, and we've been uh, talking a lot the last couple of months about the legislative side of tobacco, the tobacco world. But this is uh, something I read on Cigar Aficionado recently. Uh, so we're going to get away from the legislative part for this week at least. Fuente and Padron embark on innovative cigar project to honor their fathers. Oh, that's so sweet. Arturo Fuente and Padron, two of the most heralded family companies in the handmade cigar industry, are joining forces on a special project to honor the former patriarchs of each company. Padron, which makes all of its cigars in Nicaragua, is going to be crafting a smoke to honor Carlos Fuente Sr., the longtime leader of Fuente, who died in 2016. Fuente, one of the largest cigar producers in the Dominican Republic, has made a cigar to honor Jose Orlando Padron, who founded Padron Cigars in 1964 and who died in 2017. The two cigars will be sold together side by side in humidor style boxes adorned with the images of each man with their signatures as part of the cigar brands. Each cigar will measure seven inches long by 50 ring gauge and the rest of the details are in the hands of their makers. The cigars won't be out until next year, and a portion of the proceeds will go to charity. The cigars are being blended by the sons of these departed patriarchs, the next generation in each family. <laughs> Carlos Carlito Fuente Jr. is blending the cigar made in honor of Jose Orlando Padron, while George Padron is blending the cigar for Carlos Fuente Sr. Fuente has finished his cigars, which are aging currently, and Padron has begun the project. Neither man knows the blend or any of the details of the other man's cigar. 
The companies intend to release the cigars at the 2021 PCA trade show in Las Vegas, which is currently scheduled for July 2021. That is an interesting story. And, you know, when you were telling me at first that, you know, they were going to be, you know, a Padron and a Fuente sold side by side, I'm like, oh, well, that's not really a collaboration so much as maybe you're collaborating on the box. <laughs> but to have the other family make the blend for the other. Um, that's pretty cool. That's that's a cool idea. Again, it's, you know, it's, um, I don't, it's more like I, I wouldn't, to me, it's not so much of a, of a collaboration. Collaboration, I would think, is, you know, you're both working on it together. Mm -hmm. But it's, like it's more like one family honoring the other. Correct, yeah. And I like that. I yep. like that idea a lot. And I like know? the fact that they're not disclosing to each other what they're making. In other mm. words, what, what type of cigars they're making, what type of tobacco they're using, or what the blends are. And I also think that's like a, a perfect mirror of like how the cigar business is, is that, you know, technically we, they're all, we're all competitors, but we're also family, you know? And I think that's one of the greatest things about the cigar business. Yeah, you can talk about that a little bit, Jim. You know, you've been oh, all over the place with, yeah, with the business and everything. It, it is. It's a very unique thing. Yeah. Very, very unique. Um, and like we were talking earlier during the break, you know, you get challenged in some of the stores when people might not say the nicest things about another brand. Mm -hmm. It's an immediate. It's an I immediate turn off. Right, right, turn off. But I go right into, like, it's been long enough. I can talk about the Padron family, the Fuente family, the Aero family, all these mm -hmm. great families, the Oliva family. That's the key. It's mm. we're all basically in the same boat, if you will. Right. Um, if we all do well, the industry does well. Yeah. And we all do well. Right. I mean, it's yep. very, very, very much like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's interesting how you know people will come out and say something. Um, well, why would you do that? That's your competition. But I think competition breeds a, a good brand. Mm. If if you rest on your laurels, then you, you know you've you. You're not in, in it. You're mm -hmm. not not being competitive. Um, mm -hmm. I think it'll be great. I think there was a collaboration a while back with. Um, it was called the Face Off. That was many years ago. That was La Florida Minicana and another brand I can't remember right now. But well, that's very, very interesting then. Very very similar. <laughs> no, on, on the Tune lines in of next that. Time. On the lines of that, so mm -hmm. I, I think it's good. I mean, those are two great, obviously historical families with amazing oh, yeah. legacies. So no, nope, I think totally. those cigars will obviously be fantastic. And I'm pretty sure that they will be sold out immediately. And yeah. I'm pretty sure the price tag on those is going to be hefty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it's probably going to be like, like 50 bucks for the pair. I, I, like in, I, I uh, wouldn't well, be, like, I wouldn't like be surprised if it's gonna, closer to 100. Are they going to sell them together? I, yes, it's yes, a, together. Yeah, coming it's going to be together. I, I, I imagine it would yep. be $100. Yeah, especially Ooh, yeah, yeah. especially if some of it's going to charity. I'm oh, sure, yeah. yeah I'm sure they're going to do, um, you know, in the coffin box or something. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like uh, like the Christmas pack. Right, Almost right. like that, like what the, they does. Yes, for their foundation is amazing. So they, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely yeah. helps the kids. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see where it goes. It's all speculation on price on our part. I mean, we have no idea uh, what it will actually be. Well, they're not going to sit on the show. Be, that's for sure. It's not yeah. going to be cheap. Uh, I'm I'm sure. No. And um, but uh, but let me tell you, if it is, you know, like under fifty bucks, those things will be gone like nothing. Oh, absolutely. And we'll be smoking them here next time. We could be. Maybe. We could be. I am Pastor Padron. <laughs> that you are. That would be this a great show. I could say a little prayer tonight right before the show mm -hmm. ends. Yeah, the, the Padrones are very uh, devout Catholics. And uh, when the first time I met them, I think it was back in 2012 or something like that, um, when they found out my nickname was Pastor Padron, they just went bonkers. They didn't. They. I. I was told by the guy who, the the owner of the shop, that uh, they didn't stop talking about that the rest of the night. Uh, I was. I was. Uh, I. I left with a. I left with several uh, Padron number nines. Nice. You know, and uh, that was a very nice thing. Mm -hmm. That was a very good day. Very nice thing. Very good day. Yeah. I left with. I left with my Padron hammer signed by everybody. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. awesome. That everyone signed in front of me, not one of those things where you get it signed by everybody. He uses, he uses it constantly at his house. Yep. 
Yep. It's it's in my tool shed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in a very it's in a very sacred place. Pastor Padron's Padron hammer. It's hanging above his uh mantle mm. and his fireplace in his mm. study. So are you ready for a would you rather question? Mm, you Always. know I am, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. This week's would you rather question brought to you by Asylum Cigars. <laughs> Pandemonium. Try some today. Um, and we'll start we'll start with uh, little Jimmy over here. Aww. <laughs> would you rather be four foot five? Or you mean, you seven mean he's not now? <laughs> uh, in other Sorry. words, would you rather be Fruit about fruits. how tall you are now? <laughs> a, a, a hair bit or shorter. would you rather be seven seven? Oh, God. oh boy. Seven foot seven. I'd I'd go four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. You'd rather be you'd rather be an overgrown it's, dwarf. Well, it's worse on both sides, right? If you're too small or too big, mm -hmm. you're not really that way stick, I can get into all the little places. You're going to stick out no matter what, right? <laughs> into an NBA That's game. what she said. <laughs> <laughs> These softball comments are brought to you. <laughs> I, I think I will go with the uh, four feet five. Well, that's that's very close to what you already are. It's, it's, well, it's your comfort level is right subjective. there. Subjective. I am sitting in a wingback chair, but mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. be more taller in another mm -hmm. chair, I imagine. Yeah. Your feet do touch the ground. They do. That's that. Yep. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> I love. It. Nick, what about you? Would you rather be four foot five or seven foot seven? Being six foot now, I probably want to experience life at four foot five. I'd I'd want to. I'd want to see how that would go. Little Nicky, <laughs> just, just run around, just. Hey, Dudley Moore was never without a smile. There you go. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'd probably want to do four foot five. That'd be yeah. that'd be interesting. I'd like yeah. to see life uh, at Jimmy's level. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I'm going to go with seven foot seven. Seven foot seven. Because super size me. White man, <laughs> white man can't jump. But that's a lie. But at seven that's foot a seven, lie. at seven foot seven, you don't need to. No, that's, <laughs> true. that's true. He and, is the and in a in a room full of people, you would never get lost. Of course not. You'd oh. hit your head in the doorway. But that's okay. You have to that's okay. You know, you would never see me riding in a Yugo. But <laughs> no, <you> know, <laughs> no. <laughs> or a mini. You'd have I to, think, I think you'd have be, to take I, out the front seat, just like uh, Hightower did in Police Academy. I think it would be fun to be <laughs> right. that tall. You know, again, I I'm sure it has its challenges, but yeah. I I I would I I could certainly overcome that to. Mm -hmm. Be the tallest guy in the room, and I think lifespan would be one of the bigger challenges. Yeah, the people uh, that's too okay. tall. Is... Dave, would um, you rather be four foot five or seven foot seven? I would. I think I'd definitely go with four foot five. I'm I'm six foot, and I I already hit my head too many times. I'd be I'd be I'd be a lot happier being four foot five. We've noticed a lot of bumps on the back of your head. Oh, <laughs> So basically, you know, well, that's from being a younger brother. Yeah, <laughs> you could just actually pretend like you were a kid even more mm. because you'd be <laughs> kid sized. I think a four foot five Nick would look pretty good, though. No, would you still have the uh, I'd be wide the I'd muscles? Be, yeah, would you, you still I would muscle keep those. Yeah, yeah, I'd be <laughs> so wide. Your legs You'd have would a look frame. so weird, though. It would, right? You would have the weirdest looking trunks. Be like Franco oh, Nero, <laughs> you know. Be like Colombo. When well, when Columbo Arnold's... was a little. That's bit what I meant to say, Franco Colombo. Franco Colombo. Franco mm -hmm. Nero. Franco Colombo. Yeah. yeah, I'd be, I'd be Franco Colombo, technically. And he was wide. He was a big boy back in the day. Who, who's that? Franco Colombo. You with don't know Arnold who that is. The, his the, little friend that he used to work out with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God. He was, he God was rest his soul. He small, passed. but he was huge. Yeah, he was really yeah. big. He was the smallest guy on stage, but he was, I mean, like. In his yeah. in his lung capacity, he he would he would have contests to blow up. You know the uh, the hot water bottles. Mm -hmm. He would he would be able to blow that up, mm -hmm. and literally let, let him explode. He was that 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 uh, that strong. Wow, he yeah. was amazing. Yeah. 
See, you learn something every day, Dan. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. If you're small and have good lungs, you can blow up water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> fan freaking tastic. It's like a Howard Stern side show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, give me that water bottle. I'll show you something. <laughs> Respect. Respect. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I I go back and forth. You know, I'm I'm kind of you know very hobbitish at heart, and <laughs> part of me wants to be small. You know, if I had that choice, but I, I I think I would probably go go large, go big or go home, go big or go home. Yep. You know, make those asylum cigars look like you know little panatellas in my hand. Oh yeah, yeah. Tea Corona. You know, I think I, I think I look like a Lancero. Now that said, yeah. I, I, I would not be able to live in my house if I were no, seven. no. Yeah. My, you would have such a bad back. You know, it would be, <laughs> it would be horrible. It's all lower ceilings. I mean, I think they're all over seven seven. Not that I couldn't stand up straight, right? But you know, um, I would have to be ducking around every corner. And would have, would have to trade houses because mm. I have high ceilings. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, yep. and and all, wide and doors and all, too, right? Yeah, you yep. gotta have high door frames. Wipes through. Who cares about the yep. Very wide. All right. So, final verdict here on Carolina Red Flake and your experience of it in your extra large pipe, except for Jim, who has an average sized <laughs> pipe, <laughs> but it looks big to him because he's short. <laughs> Barney Rubble. Barney. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i drove her as fast as i could are you are you still enjoying it i am actually it's burning beautifully mm-hmm. it is a wonderful yeah. wonderful tobacco mm. last year's uh release was ten thousand tins wow. this year's was also ten thousand tins um it is it's, mellow it's something it's that once so cornell and deal yeah. releases it you know it's it's gone in a day now you said you have some back in stock, or you? We have some of last year's, but I have um, a goodly size order of tins coming as well. Oh yeah, and um, we will have it for a, a good while because I knew this would be popular. It's a, it's again one of the most popular straight Virginia flakes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's available on the market today. Yep. Um, and it is really, really good stuff. And like we are telling you now, this is last year's. It ages incredibly well. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. get yourself a few tins of this year's <clears throat> release and throw a couple aside and forget about them for a while because oh, yeah. next year, the year after, even 10 years later, it's going to be amazing. Amazing the difference is going to be there. It's really, really good. Dave, what do you think about uh, your experience in the extra large pipe? Um, I feel like uh, the the age on this is just absolutely amazing. I really didn't think it was going to be better, but it's better. Um, the the to me the stone fruits and the the uh, like the little raisin from the retro hail, uh, so smooth, so smooth. Um, it's even more developed than what it was uh, last year. Um, I love I love smoking it out of this pipe. I love it. It's, it's so much so much flavor. Oh, I love it. Now, <laughs> but did you smoke it out of a smaller smaller bowl pipe? Before? I, I I did smoke a little bit of out of the pipe, the smaller pipe, and I feel like I'm definitely. I feel like I'm definitely getting more flavor out of the big one. Okay. Me. What kind of flavor differences are you getting? It's just more intense. So you're getting more intense out of your Now, your bowl isn't really so much wider as it is just deeper. Deep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just wanted to clarify that. Nick, do you want to say something? 30 seconds. 30 seconds or less? Mm-hmm. It's great, and I wouldn't change. Uh, I wouldn't change going to a smaller bowl. I like the bigger bowl. I like how the flavor delivery in the bigger bowl comes to my palate. In the smaller bowl, it's a little bit too intense. It kind of almost bombards my my palate with all the flavors. It's but isn't little... that normally what you want? I, I know. That's what you a, want, Nick. In a, in a cigar. You want to get punched in the face. No. Spit in a, it out. This is soft Nick now. This is soft Nick now soft, talking. Soft Nick. <laughs> easy. Nice and easy. We'll just take it slow. 
we'll put on some, you know, Slayer. Keith, some Keith Sweat. How about Al Green? Yeah, we could do some Al Green, some nice jazz, maybe some traditional Italian music. All right, it's been 30 seconds. We'll get a little nice Chianti or something. Mm -hmm. Chianti. A sea shanty. A sea shanty. (laughs) But, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't change it. The bigger bowls are always for me, man. Paul, aside from maybe the intensity level of the fruit flavors, uh, maybe – Diminishing a little bit with the the Peterson, um, I'm still enjoying this very very much. I picked up um, a little bit of uh, in, incense mm-hmm. uh, uh, last five minutes, and it's just intoxicating. Uh, but still, you get those wonderful stone fruit, nice uh, you know, woody notes. The spice <clears throat> is, is just perfect. The retro hill, oh, I could do this all day. Mm. This really really good. This is an all day smoke for me. Yep, absolutely. This is this is a great tobacco for me too. Uh, I don't think that you could put it in a pipe and not enjoy it. Right. Don't matter re- really what size or shape the bowl is. Um, I I have to say you know now I and I'll I I think this should be made clear too. My pipe is the among all of us is the only one that's a different shape as well as being a different size. Than everyone else's. Everyone else was using either uh, smaller pots or deeper pots. Um, this is a concave uh, pipe that I'm smoking it in, and it started off much more uh, mellow, much more muted, much more of those woody notes, not near the intense flavors that I got in a smaller 321 that I used earlier today. As I'm now approaching. Uh, uh, the, the the entering into the second third <laughs> of of the pipe here, uh, the flavors are starting to intensify a little bit more. There, um, you know, a, a lot of those deep, rich notes are coming are coming together. And you know, one of the secrets I think to smoking um, a pipe like this of this size is taking your time. You can't blow through it because if you get if you're really sucking on a pipe like this. You get so much heat, you know, burning across the top of the pipe. The whole pipe just be get, becomes very, very hot, and that's that really does affect your experience of the tobacco. So, I think I uh, kind of naturally kind of slowed down a little bit so that it was not ever really getting super hot. The pipe is nice and warm; it's not too hot or anything like that. Um, but I have to be careful to keep it to keep it going like that. Um, but I'm, I'm enjoying it more as it goes down the bowl, but I, I personally enjoyed it much more in the smaller pipe. Um, and especially that pot shaped, uh, bowl. I think that kind of shape does the best with this kind of tobacco. And if you can, if you can have a, a, you know, real deep pot shaped pipe, you know, um, uh, my Peterson, you know, 15 XL, I think it's called, um, you know, where it's just one big, long, you know, pipe. Um, I think you could get a really good, enjoyable experience for that because everything just kind of stews and heats up slowly throughout the whole pipe. And, um, um, but still, even though this is not as enjoyable as it was in the 321, this is some damn good tobacco. And um, I, I it, it's just amazing stuff. Make sure you get it while you can. It won't be around forever. Unlike mm. Asylum 13 Pandemonium Cigars. Correct. Um, Available now. <laughs> Available now at Twin Shops everywhere. Um, now, next week, we're going to do a complete 180. And we are going to be doing short cigars. We're going to do a number of short cigars next week. And we're going to be looking at short pipes and, uh, you know, how, you know, and, and looking at those and, and what are the styles of like what are called nose warmers, uh, you know, pipes that really just, you know, big pipes like this, they're hard to hang off your mouth. They're big. They're, they're obnoxiously huge. I, I mean, not, not 
you know, Jimmy's, which is more, you know, maybe large to him. But it's, <laughs> it's got this incredible green stem. It's that a gorgeous, nice. That's gorgeous a pipe. Way. That's a beautiful St. Patrick's pipe. It's a collector's um, item, but it is for sale. And uh, you're not going to want to miss next week's show. And uh, so make sure you go to uh, follow us on Facebook if you're not already. And at uh, Not Just Blowing Smoke on Instagram so that you don't ever miss a thing. We'll see you next week. Uh, didn't we have a little us. something for uh, Mark? No. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. All right. That's that. You can you can end it now, Dave. <laughs> end it. End it, Dave. Another end day, it. another smoke, boys. End it, Dave. And that's not just blowing smoke. End it. End it. End, end it, Dave. Sure? Now. Now. All right. All right. Now. Dollar, 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 y'all. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is not just blowing smoke. Rolling with the top down, smoking.